What's going on guys? If you guys don't know me, my name is Reese White. I am currently a senior in the class of 2020 at DACC from the Digital Design Program. I'm nearing the end of my high school career and I was assigned this legacy project. With this legacy project, I really took the time to reflect on my favorite time spent at DACC and I want to explain some of those times to you. Throughout my time spent at DACC, I have been extremely fortunate enough to work with many different clients. I was able to start my own company and I was fortunate enough to go to BPA Nationals in Anaheim, California in 2019. My experience within BPA was my favorite experience at DACC by far. I want you guys to be able to experience the same feelings I felt throughout the whole process. So if you're currently watching this, I'm sure the teachers are showing it to you because you are somewhat interested in going far with BPA. And I'm here to explain to you some of my favorite tips and tricks that I learned throughout my time with BPA. So let's take it back. I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you guys kind of how I got involved with BPA, what my thought process was, and kind of the situation as a whole. So coming into the program, I already kind of knew a lot about digital design because I had a friend who graduated a year before I actually joined the program. And I had two years with video production experience prior to going to the Career Center. So coming into digital design, I knew I wanted to do video production in the BPA competition. Problems I were facing were number one, there was a senior team that was a, a grade above me from DAC who had placed fourth place in the nation the year before and they weren't gonna take it easy on us. I was new to the program. I was with all new people who I didn't know. I didn't know anybody that did video. I didn't know if anybody knew anything about video other than me. So I really just had to find a team and go with it. I ended up getting a team together of people who didn't know anything about video. The only person that knew video was Brian Weitzel. We had Casey on our team who he was really good with drawing and he also had a little bit of acting experience. We had Madison who was interested interested in video, interested in writing, and overall really good with managing things. So with that, we kind of had to go with what we had. Me and Brian kind of had to take the lead on the video side of things. We had Madison who kind of took the lead with our presentation. We had Casey who acted in our video and he was also an amazing storyboard artist. And we were able to go all the way to nationals. So with that, I wanted to come in and give you guys tips and tricks to how you guys can get to nationals, things to consider, things to keep in mind, and overall just things I had learned throughout my time in BPA. So we're gonna break this down into four different sections. You have your pre-production, your production, your product, and your presentation. These are the four steps that you're gonna take from the day you get your prompt to the day you're presenting in front of the judge. Granted, there are gonna be virtual competitions, there's gonna be the online testing, there's gonna be different circumstances that whatever competition you choose to do, your guys' competitions might be different than a video production team, I'm gonna teach you guys what I learned through the video production team competition. I would just take some notes, pick and choose the information you take from this video, and I really hope it helps. So we're gonna dive into pre-production. What is pre-production? Pre-production, the name just kind of speaks for itself. It's what you're doing before you start actually working on the product. This includes actually getting your prompt. When you get your prompt, you're gonna look at it and it's gonna have a lot of information. It's gonna have requirements, it's gonna have a rubric attached to it, it's gonna have presentation requirements, and it's gonna have the prompt itself. So our junior year for video production, our prompt was to make an advertisement for BPA essentially. This was really hard for us because we were new to this. We had no idea what exactly BPA was, but this brings me into my next section of pre-production, which is research. We spent days and days just researching searching what BPA was, what parts we could take from it, what their tagline was, how we could implement that into our video. After we did all this research, we had to plan out what exactly this video was gonna be. What was the story we were gonna tell and how we were gonna make it unique? Being unique is so, so important because you wanna stand out from everyone else. You're gonna have judges that are sitting there all day watching videos, looking at graphic design, looking at photos. All the stuff they're looking at is following the same prompt. So they're gonna see a lot of the same stuff. What you need to do is decide how yours is gonna be different than literally everyone else's. For our advertisement, our junior year for BPA, we told a story with our advertisement, which was something that we didn't see really anybody else doing, and that's what I believe took us to nationals. The video work we put into it was subpar. It wasn't anything amazing, but we told a story, and that's what really took us to the next level, and that's what made us stand out to the judges. So those are just some of the things that I think people should really consider when they're going into pre-production for BPA. Now we're gonna move into the production side of things. I can't tell you guys how exactly to produce your product, but these are just some tips and 
tricks that I learned through my experience with BPA. So as you move into producing your product, you need to make sure things stay moving. This is something that you need to carry on throughout the whole process of BPA, but things need to constantly be moving. It can't really be a situation where you are working on BPA one week and then you're working on something completely different the next week. BPA needs to be a part of your everyday lab. You need to divide things up to where you're spending time working on BPA throughout some portion of the day and you can do other stuff, but BPA needs to be a part of your everyday if you want to go far with it. Now with that, if you're working on it every day, you might think, okay, I might get done early if I just bust my butt this week, I'm gonna get it all done this week and then I can start doing something else next week. This is just something that I would not recommend. If you have extra time before your date of submission, then you need to go back and perfect it. It needs to be as good as it can possibly be when you go to submit for regionals. If you get it done really early, then there is a good chance that there's a lot of room for improvement and I think that you really need to consider that if you want to really go far with this competition. For me personally, we worked to the last day. We were we were gathering stuff up the last day because we spent so much time perfecting everything that it came down to the last second and it's not because we were slacking in any way shape or form it was just because of the amount of stuff we included in our video the next section is your product um i mean this is just where you're wrapping everything up as soon as your product is done it needs to be submitted make sure when you're submitting you're submitting absolutely everything you can when you look at your prompt you're going to see everything that is required when you submit your video you need to pay attention to the format you're submitting it in you got to pay attention to the quality that you're submitting it in. You have to look at what all is required when you submit. You know, there were like requirements. We had to have all of our release forms for our video. We had to have all of our personal release forms for our team. We had to have our team release form. And then on top of that, we submitted with our video, the script we wrote, the storyboard that was all colored. You're really just trying to stand out. That's the whole point of this. You wanna show to the judges that you put more work into this than anybody else. You're trying harder at this than anybody else. So now you have your entire product finish you have your video you have your graphic design piece you have you have your photography you have your I, I don't know what whatever competition you're competing in you have that done and now you're starting to think about presentation for us personally we had a teammate that stayed consistent with presentation throughout our entire time working with BPA Madison really took the lead on it and had been working on it for months we really wanted a good presentation because to be honest with you presentation is as important as the product you can have this amazing video or this amazing graphic design piece when you're going in to present and then just bomb a presentation and you're you're done with BPA. So your presentation is important. There's an entire separate rubric to presentation that I recommend that you study immensely. Make sure you see what all is required for presentation. Make sure you see what all they're looking for. The first step to your presentation is making it unique and making sure that the judges remember you. A tactic that our team used for presentation was having a physical visual piece to give to the judges. So not only did we have, you know, like a standard slideshow that was kind of going along with what we were saying, we had a pamphlet that we were able to hand to the judges. It was really professional looking throughout our entire time creating our video. We had taken behind the scenes photos. So the entire cover of our pamphlet was behind the scenes photos. We made a logo for our team. It overall just looked extremely professional and we let the judges keep those. It costed a little money to go get them printed and make them look nice, but we let the judges hold on to this because at the end of the day, when they're going through making their last grades, you know, they might come past that pamphlet and they're like, oh my gosh, this team was good. Yes, they're going through. No other team did this. You need to make sure that your entire presentation is attention grabbing. If you're using a slideshow, it needs to look professional. I don't want anybody to go in with a slideshow that is a standard Google Slides template. It needs to look professional. You need to stand out. On our Google Slides, I had our, our storyboard artist, Casey, draw out little figures of us that just, you know, it was just like a next step up, just making yourself stand out. You don't want to go in and be boring. You want to be attention grabbing. You want the judges to listen to you. You want to be confident. The next step to it is practice. You need to make sure that you're practicing a lot. The entire week leading up to BPA presentations, our team was practicing, 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 practicing. We would sit in the photo lab all day, every day in lab and just go over our lines. We would critique each other's lines, be like, you know, taking different parts out, putting different parts in just absolutely perfecting it, making sure we knew our line, making sure that no matter what question the judges asked us, we were able to answer fluently. We know who was gonna answer which questions. Just being prepared, 
preparation is key for this. So now that I've explained all of this to you, I kind of want to explain each level of BPA and how it's laid out. So BPA regionals is basically our career center against Mount Vernon or Knox County Career Center. But as far as regional goes, you are at this church with all the people from Knox County. You kind of have all day. Make sure that as soon as you get there, you go find where you're presenting. You make sure you know what time you're presenting. You're just in this church. I remember the first year we presented in this like nursery room at the church. Um, it was just us with one judge. He was really nice. We actually had the same judge the following year, our senior year. They actually did some like modifications to the church, but we were in the same room, but the room was even nicer. I don't really know how to explain like what the room setup is. Just know that if you're going to use a TV, most cases you're going to have uh, plugins for the TV. Something I would recommend is if you're bringing a TV to present on, bring an extension cord. Even if you don't end up using it, it's going to show the judge that you were prepared. I've seen the team actually bring their own table in to set their TV on. I don't think they ended up using it because they're you, for every level there has been a table supplied. A regional is pretty much you're just sitting there all day waiting for your time to present. You go present and then you go back and sit in the gym of the church for the rest of the day. Me personally, I brought a TV to present on. So I also brought a DVD player and we watched the Scooby-Doo movie. Junior year, we watched Scooby-Doo 1. Senior year, we watched Scooby-Doo 2. It was just fun. My junior year, we actually didn't get to go to regional awards. We had too many snow days in a row and we had to get a move on so we didn't get to experience that our junior year our senior year we got to go experience bpa awards it's a really cool experience i recommend you invite your parents you get trophies you're just in an auditorium normally g will take the mic and call off names so at least for video production i know first place only moves on from regionals for junior year and senior year we won both times and got to move on to states so after regionals you get some critiques from your judges you have a little bit of time to go back and work on your project fix some things the judge might have pointed out and then you have to resubmit submit for states. I recommend you look at the rubric for both and critique not only your project but your presentation as well. Make sure everything's absolutely perfected and then you go ahead and submit for states again. States is a lot bigger than I ever thought. I did not realize how many people actually competed in this organization. I did not realize how many people were gonna be there. It's huge, it's intimidating, and just know that if you plan on going to states, you better bring your A game because there are a lot of people, and all the people that are there are people that actually care about this and that are gonna put their all into it, so you have to make sure you're putting your all into it. States is kind of like the same setup. It's at the convention center downtown. I recommend that if you're watching this now, you can go actually probably just walk around the convention center go check it out go see get a feel for it states is two days in a row so the first day you take a bus there uh, everyone goes and gets set up in this room uh, there's a room just for DACC I recommend you uh, you get there get your stuff set up go find where your room is that you're presenting go get some breakfast take it back to the little DACC base camp and I recommend you practice presentation practice for a little bit if you have time maybe go look around a little more but make sure you guys practice before you go in and present make sure you are even practicing how you're going to go in and get everything set up you're going to be there for a while so i recommend you bring stuff to entertain yourself with i didn't bring scooby-doo to states because there was just a lot to do so i didn't really feel the need to bring it but the setup for presenting is kind of the same i know for video production we actually had two judges so you go in the room is way too big it's like this huge room that you're in to present in and it's just like two little tables normally there's a table where the judges are sitting and then a table across from them where you're going to set up i would really make sure you bring an extension cord to states especially Especially if you're gonna use a TV or anything like that because the room is huge you might not be right next to a plug or anything so you got to be sure that you're prepared for that basically you're gonna present and then go sit there until there's buses to leave presentation day my, of my junior year we got to go walk around and we went to North Market I know as long as there's a senior chaperone you should be able to go to North Market and stuff like that and go get food unfortunately with it being 2020 this year we didn't get to experience states we're on quarantine right now it's the end of April actually two Two days ago I did my states presentation with my team. I don't know what the circumstances for you are going to be when you're watching this but we had to present over a video chat and it was not a really good experience. We know one of our teammates disconnected halfway through the presentation. It was not as fun so I'm really hoping for you guys that you guys get to go experience states at the convention center because it's a lot of fun. Anyways you have your presentation day over. The next day you go and this is the breathtaking day. So states awards is the following day after states at least it was for us. 
us junior year and you walk into this auditorium it's the biggest ballroom at the convention center and it is huge literally ginormous like that I, I would guess like close to a thousand people were in this room all students from across the state if you make top 10 you get to get called on stage which is just breathtaking as is so for my junior year i remember our name got called and it was the craziest feeling we run up we get on stage and how they call the names is really nerve-wracking because they start from last to first pretty much they start at third place they called third place and our name didn't get called and i was like oh my gosh so we're either you know we're either less than third place or we're second or first. They called our name for second place and it was breathtaking. Like I knew we were going to California, which was just crazy and a dream of mine. And we got beat by Pickerington North, but it was okay because we were still going to nationals, which was our goal all along. Our goal was just to get to California and win. For State's video production, I know top two go on. I know it's the same for like graphic design, stuff like that. I know I just know that top two move on to nationals. So I don't know exactly how to explain explain nationals to you guys because it's a different place every year so I'm just gonna kind of explain my experience in California so with California I'm gonna try to throw some pictures up on the screen for you guys to kind of show you guys exactly like what we all did so I remember we got these shirts they were really cool shirts that uh had our names on them and everything and it was just a way for the teachers to keep track of us we went the teachers we went with were G Mr. Hudapul, who is from Delaware, and Mrs. Pitzer was our female chaperone. Uh, we woke up early, we got to the Columbus airport, uh, flew out, we flew from Columbus to Chicago, and then Chicago to LAX. Chicago kind of disappointed me because all I wanted in Chicago was Chicago style pizza and the airport only had a Pizza Hut and Pizza Hut is gross so I was disappointed with that. Get to California I remember we go to the hotel the hotel we stayed at was crazy. I remember the whole time we couldn't use the elevators because there were so many people in this hotel that the elevators took like 20 minutes to get through so I definitely lost weight on that trip just literally walking up and down the stairs. I roomed with my two teammates Brian and Casey. I don't remember exactly what what order all of the days went in but I'm gonna just kind of explain to you all the cool experience I had so the first experience that I'm thinking of off the top of my head was the SoCal bash it was like this big like concert thing that BPA put on one of the nights I don't know if they do it for every location that nationals is at but basically they hired a DJ they hired some like dancers and stuff like that and everyone just kind of had this BPA mosh pit and it was kind of cool because you know there was all sorts of people just kind of all there being professional but just still moshing and there was good food and there were games and the next one was Venice art walls I'll kind of explain that more in depth I remember Man, I just wanna go I remember we got there, I walked around with Brian. Me and Brian brought a camera, which is where most of that footage is from. He filmed most of that. I kind of put, I edited it. Walking around, we went up to a, we went up to a sunglasses spot. We got some sunglasses on the beach. We went and filmed the people at the skate park. We went over to the art walls. Immediately, one of the graffiti artists there started talking to us. He was just really cool. We just started filming with him. We, we told him like why we were there, how we kind of earned this trip to California. And he was really inspired by it. And actually, I still DM with the guy to this day on Instagram. I plan to go back out to California sometime and meet up with him and film him again but that was just my favorite day there to be honest another day we also spent going to disneyland which was really cool i liked disneyland a lot it, the rides were all so crazy though because they all have, were like themed it was really fun every two years with bpa you get to either go to california or florida so you get to go to one of the disney parks so hopefully you were able to get to one of those and if you have the opportunity to take it and make sure you go because it is the best experience ever but yeah i don't know disney just 
just kind of explains itself. At the end of the day at Disney, they do a big fireworks show. I sat with Brian and watched that and you know, it was just an incredible journey to get to that point. And me and Brian just kind of hugged it out and had a moment, man. It was, it was incredible. We've had put so much work into it that year to get to that point. And we just like, it was like, we made it. Like it's, a, it was an inspiring experience. Another cool experience was G kind of surprised us with going around on party buses. I am the best DJ that DACC has ever seen. That's all I'm gonna say. I DJed the whole time. I played some good old throwback music. Uh, we kind of just all jammed out. You can see a little bit of, of it in this video. We got to go to Hollywood. We got to see some of the stars. We got to meet a guy from Danny Duncan's YouTube videos. I don't know if you guys watch him, but it's this guy from his videos. Hollywood was really cool. Everybody kind of sits there and tries to get you to buy stuff off of them and that's that. Overall, BPA was my favorite experience with DACC. If you're watching this your junior year, you have two years of it and I recommend that you give it your all both years in a row. I myself am a competitor. I love the competitive aspect of it. It's something that is incredible to put on your resume. I'm able to now say that I placed fifth place in the country for a video production competition. I placed second in the state of Ohio for a project that I do directed that looks amazing on a resume so really take this opportunity and run with it i hope this helps you guys if you guys ever have any questions about this i'm gonna put my instagram up on the screen now even if this is years down the road just message me tell me that you're a dacc student i'm here to answer any questions you guys have and if i can't answer it then i know other people that can so yeah good luck this year guys i hope you guys really take every opportunity you get through this program you guys are gonna get out of this program what you put into the program i promise so yeah guys best of luck.